Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics, and in this video, I'd like to discuss the continued meltdown of the ERG in the wake of Rishi Sunak's Windsor Framework vote after Steve Baker takes an axe to the ERG WhatsApp group by removing a load of fellow members from it. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So I discussed recently whether or not the ERG even have a role right now. Not simply because we've left the EU, the cause for which the group formed in the first place, but because there seemed to be disagreements about what they all wanted now. It's the case with a, a lot of pro-Brexit collaboration that the individuals who ended up working together to con the public into forcing us out of the EU didn't seem able to agree on what should happen afterwards. So they put their differences aside and worked on what they did all agree on, that we should leave the EU, a focus on what united them rather than what divided them, which allowed them to become a potent enough force to actually succeed after a few decades of internal bickering, a lesson the rejoin community may need to be mindful of. But last week, the ERG seemed to make a fairly fatal error. Last Monday, the group formally announced that it did not think the Windsor framework was acceptable. Now, this was already dividing the ERG, because Rishi Sunak has several members of the ERG in his government, including his cabinet. Two of the ERG ministers run the Northern Ireland office, and a third is foreign secretary. So the general negotiations for the Windsor framework at the ministerial level were being carried out by three members of the ERG. So when the so-called star chamber of the group said that the framework wasn't quite acceptable, they were immediately pointing to splits within the group. Then they seemed to ram the final nail into their own coffin. Ahead of the vote on Wednesday, they formally announced that their advice was for members of the ERG to vote against the deal. Foolish. Foolish. They knew it wasn't going to happen. In fact, I gather they only had about 30 members even turn up to the meeting, which was it's most of them, but by no means all of them. For something this important, wouldn't you think all ERG members would like to go along? So for a start, they were immediately pointing out how they were losing relevance, even amongst their own members. But they knew that most ERG members were not going to vote against the deal. So why say that they recommend members do? Why not just say something like, look, it's our considered view that the framework does not address all of the concerns that it should, but we can see that it is an improvement, there are arguments for and against supporting it as an improvement to the protocol with a view to improving it later. We therefore advise that the framework is not the finished product, but that members should vote on this particular occasion according to their own views. Nice and neutral, but no, they said ERG members should vote against it, knowing that fewer than half of them were likely to. At a stroke, they rendered themselves obsolete in Tory politics. So as I'd previously concluded, they're simply likely to limp on now until they all agree to put their group out of its misery and go their separate ways, championing in other self-defeating causes. Steve Baker, for example, wants to expend energy, destroying the human race via his attacks on net zero, for example. And speaking of Mr. Baker, he was involved in a little bit of handbags on Friday. Harry Cole, who's the main political hack for The Sun, reported that Baker was removing MPs from the ERG WhatsApp group. Cole said that Baker had said Brexit is done and so the group is disbanding. As a bonus, he then mentioned that Ian Duncan Smith complained about him acting irrationally before he threw him out of the airlock himself. Now, I have to say on this particular case, Ian Duncan Smith is actually quite correct, as funny as it was. You know, from Steve Baker's point of view, you think of it, it is a little bit childish, isn't it? Like, if Steve Baker himself wants to leave the ERG or leave their messing about behind, he's quite free to do so anytime he likes and leave the rest to, to deal with it themselves. He can't just unilaterally say the group no longer exists. And as for the WhatsApp group, okay, he's an admin. I don't know how WhatsApp works from these point of views. I'm not an admin for any. I mean, could he just leave it and leave it to someone else or just tell them, look, guys, uh, I'm not in the Brexit game anymore. This is a Brexit group. I'm afraid I am the owner of the group. Um, could Penfold make another group perhaps and you all join that? A little bit more mature. But anyway, I will say that Steve Baker did reply to Harry Cole on this Twitter thread, something I only know by looking at the thread on a different Twitter account because the precious snowflake blocked me for calling out some nonsense in the past. Politely, I'm always polite. But I noticed that he denied saying what Cole ascribed to him. 
but not denying that he was removing MPs from the group, which begs a few questions, I think. First of all, what is it Baker insists he didn't say? Because Cole ascribed two things to Baker, that Brexit was done and therefore the group's disbanding. Which is it? That Brexit was done or the group is disbanding? If he means that he didn't say the group was disbanding, was he just removing MPs who voted against the framework? Was he creating a WhatsApp group for active members of the ERG who support the framework? In which case he's essentially kicking out the leaders of the ERG and keeping the group as a sort of backbench ERG WhatsApp. Or is he insisting that he didn't say Brexit was done, but is basically destroying the ERG WhatsApp itself? Not that it's a big deal. Penfold or Lord Snooty, as I say, can always create their own group and invite the remaining swivel-eyed loons if they want. But it is an interesting development. We know that Baker has said after the announcement of the framework that he wanted to be done with the whole thing and move on. You wonder if Baker himself now has what he wants from Brexit or if he's changed his mind about what's feasible. I know some have suggested, you know, whenever I've mentioned this in the comments, you get quite a few people saying, you know, he's basically sold out for ministerial position. But I'm not sure that rings true. Baker was offered a ministerial position in Johnson's cabinet, but turned it down saying he wanted to remain a backbencher so that he would be free to criticise the government if it went soft on Brexit. At the time, remember, we had not yet left the single market or customs union and it wasn't inevitable either. You know, was it possible that Baker simply wanted to make sure that this was achieved and afterwards was not much bothered about how the government handled things? It's possible. As far as we know, as far as I know anyway, the first time Baker was offered a ministerial position after the UK had left the single market and customs union, when Liz Truss became prime minister, he accepted it. He then agreed to remain in the role when Rishi Sunak replaced her, you know, a lettuce afterwards, indicating that he wasn't just accepting it because Liz Truss asked him, he was quite happy to do it for any leader. You know, so in other words, he was accepting the role based on the circumstances, not the leader. Also, Baker will know that he is unlikely to have much of a ministerial career. It's not really much of a carrot for him, is it? Even at the time he took the job in the Northern Ireland office, the Tories looked nailed on to lose the next election and Baker personally to lose his seat. So he was only looking at a couple of years at the most at being a minister. So I think it really comes down to the fact either Baker was happy with the hard Brexit we got and has no ambitions beyond that. He just wanted us to leave the EU, the single market and the customs union. Didn't really care what we did afterwards, which means he's a purely ideological Brexiteer with zero practical interest in the process. Or he did have ambitions for post-Brexit Britain. He did have a vision for it, but he has accepted that it's no longer possible to achieve if indeed it ever was. But either way, it certainly looks like, as indicated in an interview he gave a few weeks ago, that he is sort of done with the Brexit process one way or another now. And he is one of a very small number of Tory MPs who are most directly responsible for Brexit. You know, you could look at this and go, well, OK, Steve Baker's left. He's like one guy. Not really. Although the ERG have had a lot of members in the past and still have several dozen, most of them lack the intelligence or the leadership or the organisational skills to have actually put the Tories on this path. The number of Tory MPs who have had a material impact on our leaving the EU can be counted on the fingers of one hand, and Baker is one of them. The rest were either trapped into it, or they wanted it, but they were just cheering from the stands, but essentially not actually contributing to the process. You know, they gave it that in interviews, but they didn't actually do any organising. So whatever happens now, the ERG have lost someone who is capable of organising and getting things done. If what's left of them doesn't have anyone to coalesce around, other than a load of gobshites, you know, if they haven't got anyone who's able to actually lead, then the group is most certainly done for. And no, Rees Mogg, Francois Bone, Duncan Smith, they're not capable of organising a piss up in a brewery, so they are hardly likely to take the group forward. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.